Would you like to learn more about rocket motors? That's what I'm going to cover in this edition of the Advanced Rocketry Workshop. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. Today I'm going to talk to you about selecting rocket motors like these here. Now they look very similar, but they are vastly different, and that's what I want to cover. Now picking a rocket motor starts with looking at the code that is printed on the side of the motor. Now the code is generally the same no matter which manufacturer makes the motors. Um, they will all have a letter and two numbers. Um, so here we see an A8-3, a B6-4, and a C6-5. So first is the, is the letter, in this case it's an A, a B, and a C. Now I want you to think of it as the size of a gas tank in a car. The more gas in the car, the further the car can travel. And that's what we see when we look at these motors. Now if you you've turn them over and you look down the top, you'll see that the A motor, you have to go way down towards the bottom to see any types of propellant or anything inside. The B motor is a little further up and the C motor is filled all the way to the top. So that means that the C motor can go a lot further. And the way that manufacturers uh, work, uh, or the way the code works, is that when you go from one letter to the next, the power doubles. In practical terms, this means that when you go from one letter to the next, the amount of propellant inside doubles. Um, over here, we have um, a C motor. We have a C11-0. And then this one is a D12-0. Now these, you can look all the way down and you can actually see the black powder. Now the black powder is the propellant, it's gunpowder. It's the same stuff that the Chinese invented thousands of years ago. Uh, but you can see the C motor is only filled up to about a third of the way from the bottom, where the D motor is filled up almost three quarters of the way. So essentially the C motor has um, one half of the propellant as the D motor. And that's the way the first letter works. Can, again, you can see the A motor has less stuff inside than the B or the C. So now the second letter, or the, the first number following the letter, is the, it's a measure of the kick that the rocket motor has. Uh, technically, it's called the average thrust of the motor. To figure out the average thrust, we take the total thrust or the total power of the motor and you divide it by the burn time. This sounds complicated, but what it essentially means is that the bigger the number, the more kick it has. It's kind of like pushing the accelerator down hard on your car. The harder you push down, the faster you can take off. So if you need a rocket to go really fast, you need a rocket motor with a big number. Now, why does the A motor have a bigger number than the B motor? And the reason is that for, uh, because it has less, less um, total power, it has half the propellant in it, you need to kick it harder to get it moving, to get it up in the air, um, because they're about the same size. Um, the last number after the dash is the delay time in seconds measured from when the rocket stops burning to when it reaches the peak altitude. Now, um, what that means is, um, say the rocket takes off, the, the, the fastest point in the flight is right around where the engine stops burning the propellant. That's typically between one and two seconds into the flight. Well, when you're going really fast, and that's um, your probably your rocket has probably reached over 100 miles an hour at this point. So at that point, we need to start slowing down so that when it gets to the top, we can pop the parachute out. We don't want to pop the parachute out when the rocket is moving too fast because what's going to happen? Well, a good analogy is you take a plastic parachute, go into your car, 
go down the highway at 65 miles an hour, open the window and put the parachute out. What's going to happen to that parachute? The wind is going to take it and shred it. It's just, it's just moving too fast for the parachute to contain the forces. Same thing happens in a rocket. We need to slow down before we pop the parachute out. And that's what that last number tells us. It tells us when the parachute's going to come out. Um, here, I have four B motors. These are all B motors. Um, the first one is a B6-0. The second one is a B6-2. third one is a B6-4. And the last one is a B6-6. So they're all B6 motors, so identical thrust on both on all of them. The only thing that's different is when the parachute's going to come out. Now, a zero means that's zero seconds. So right when the propellant burns out, that's when the parachute's going to be popped. You don't want to do that um, ever. Um, and so the B6-0 is a very special motor. This is used uh, for a booster motor for staging rocket engines. Essentially what we can do is we can stack two motors on top. When this one burns out, because it doesn't have any clay top, um, like this one, you can see it best here on the C6 motor, this is clay. Um, and it's loosely packed in there and basically it prevents the ejection charge or uh, Forget about that. Don't worry about that. We'll get to that later. This, this is getting way too technical for this, this video. But essentially what that means is on a, on a booster motor, it will light a motor above it. So if you have a two-stage rocket, this motor will light this motor. And that's what we want. But you don't want to use that for ejecting a parachute. So typically you're going to use a B6-2, 4, or 6. And it's going to depend on the weight of the rocket. A rocket that's big and heavy is going to lumber off the pad and it's not going to go as fast as a small skinny rocket. Because it's big and heavy, it's not going to be traveling fast and it's going to slow down quicker. So if the rocket is big and heavy, you want to use a short delay. If it's really skinny and really light, you want to use the long delay. If it's somewhere in the middle, the four second delay is probably what you would choose. Now most rockets um, will tell you, most rocket kits will tell you right on the package which delay you want to use and you want to choose that delay. The only time you want to deviate from that if the weather conditions dictate that. If it's really windy, then you might want to go with a shorter delay. Um, and that's called weather cocking. When the rocket goes up, the wind is going to start pushing it. And basically it pushes this way. So if the wind is coming this way, the wind is going to hit those fins on the bottom and push it into the wind. And so the rocket goes into the wind. Because it doesn't it coast as high, where the apogee point is closer to the ground, you need a little bit shorter delay. So um, you can start with what the manufacturer recommends. And if it's windy, and windy I mean more than 10 miles an hour, then drop down one size to a shorter delay. Um, I have other motors here, um, so I, I went through an A, B, and C. Now there are some other uh, codes. Um, where's my A motor? Here it is. So this is an A motor, um, but you notice it, it has a lot of room inside, and that basically you're carrying a very heavy case with not a lot of propellant inside. It's like having a, a big gas tank, but not putting much gas in it. So you can be more efficient if you reduce the size of the gas tank because the gas tank actually weighs something too. So what the manufacturers did was, hey, here's the same, here's a smaller gas tank, same amount of propellant. So, but if you look at the code on the side, we have an A. So again, it's the same amount of power. This one is a three instead of an eight. So it's, it's generally a lower thrust motor. Um, it has a four second delay, that's that four. And then the T on the end, that's the manufacturer's designation of the smaller casing size. I kind of think of it as tiny, T for tiny. I don't know what it actually means, but that's what I use. Um, so these are both the same power motors. 
You would use them in different rockets, of course, but this one, if you want to go really high, this one's going to go a lot higher. Now, you can also have um, motors that are smaller than the A, and what the manufacturers did is they, they divided the A in half. So this motor right here is a, a one-half A motor. So essentially, it's one-half of the total power as the regular A motor. And then you can go down even smaller. This one here is a one-quarter A motor. So if you look inside, it has half of the propellant of the half A motor, and then half again as the full A motor. And so that's the number or the, the number or the fraction that might be in front of the first letter. So that's enough for now. There's a little bit more to explain, um, but we'll come back in the next video and I'll talk a little bit more about uh, rocket motor selection and what the engine designations mean. I'm Tim Van Milligan. This is the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. May the winds be light, may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true.